Greetings, my friend. We are all interested in the future, for that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives. And remember, my friend, future events such as these will affect you in the future. You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. And now, for the first time, we are bringing to you the full story of what happened on that fateful day. We are giving you all the evidence based only on the secret testimony of the miserable souls who survived this terrifying ordeal. The incidents, the places. My friend, we cannot keep this a secret any longer. Let us punish the guilty. Let us reward the innocent. My friend, can your heart stand the shocking facts about grave robbers from outer space? All of us on this earth know that there is a time to live and that there is a time to die. Yet death is always a shock to those left behind. It is even more of a shock when death, the proud brother, comes suddenly without warning. Just at sundown, a small group gathered in silent prayer around the newly opened grave of the beloved wife of an elderly man. Sundown of the day, yet also the sundown of the old man's heart. For the shadows of grief clouded his very reason The funeral over, the saddened group left the graveside. It was when the gravediggers started their task that strange things began to take place. Did you hear anything? I thought I did. Don't like hearing noises, especially when there ain't supposed to be any. Yeah, sort of spooky-like. Maybe we're getting old. Whatever it is, it's gone now. That's the best thing for us, too. Gone. Yeah, let's go. changes the first day of summer. What? Back on. Oh. Uh, ladies and hey, gentlemen, you. we're coming back on the air after an interruption due to technical problems. There's nothing wrong with the radio. Must have been the station. Which row is it in?
that meanwhile at the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. Right, G2. Come in. Yes, of course. I'll keep in touch. Come in, Colonel Edwards. Close the door. At ease, Colonel. Thank you, sir. Sit down. I uh, understand, Colonel, you've been on tap for many of our saucer attacks. I'm in charge of field operations, sir. You believe there are such things as flying saucers, Colonel? Yes, sir. You've seen them? Yes, sir. You realize there's a government directive stating that there is no such thing as a flying saucer? Yes, sir. You stand by your statement that you've seen flying saucers? Well, uh... Yes, sir. This could mean a court-martial admitting this against direct orders. General Roberts, may I speak freely? You may. How could I hope to hold down my command if I didn't believe in what I saw and shot at? I uh, like you, Colonel. Thank you, sir. There are flying saucers. There's no doubt they are in our skies. They've been there for some time. What are we going to do about them? Who knows? Then uh, they really are there. I thought you were convinced of that. I am. We've had contact with them. Contact? How? Radio. They speak our language? Well, not quite. We've received messages from their spaceships. For a while, it came in as just a lot of jumbled noise. And now, sir? Well, since they first uh, tried contact with us by radio, we've developed a language computer. A machine that breaks down any language to our own. General, uh, what's this all got to do with me? Well, you've been in charge of saucer field activity for a long while. I think it's about time you heard these recordings. Do you mind? Mind? Huh. I'm anxious. This is Eros, a space soldier from a planet of your galaxy. I fully realize our language differences. However, I also know you finally have perfected the dictal robotary, or as you on Earth call it, the language computer. So you can now understand that which I speak. Since the beginning of your time, we have been far beyond your planet. It has taken you centuries to even grasp what we developed eons of your years ago. Do you still believe it impossible we exist? You didn't actually think you were the only inhabited planet in the universe. How can any race be so stupid? Permit me to set your mind at ease. We do not want to conquer your planet. Only save it. We could have destroyed it long ago if that had been our aim. Our principal purpose is friendly. I admit we have had to take certain means which you might refer to as criminal. That is because of your big guns, which have destroyed some of our representatives. If you persist in denying us our landings, then we must only accept that you do not want us on friendly terms. We then have no alternative but to destroy you before you destroy us. With your ancient juvenile minds, you have developed explosives too fast for your minds to conceive what you are doing. You are on the verge of destroying the entire universe. We are a part of that universe. This is our last... That's the end of that one. Atmospheric conditions in outer space often interfere with transmitting. How many of these recordings do you have, General? An even dozen up to now. This was the last one. We received it over a month ago. Do you think they mean business? We can't afford to take any chances. Come over here. You ever been to Hollywood? Oh, a couple of times, a few years ago. You're going to be there in the morning. Just a few minutes from Hollywood, in the town of San Fernando, reports have come in of saucers flying so low the exhaust knocked people to the ground. 
There have even been stated claims of saucer landings. Major Carlson will replace you while you're out there. You're the best man for the job of attempting to contact them. Find them, Colonel. See what in hell it is they want. All right, sir. These are confidential reports, Colonel. Read them over carefully on the plane. Turn them over to intelligence when you get to Los Angeles. They'll have further orders for disposition. Yes, sir. Colonel Edwards? Yes, sir. Good luck. Thank you, sir. What will their next move be? Your space commander has returned from Earth. Send him in. You have your report? We had to pull in here to Space Station 7 for regeneration. We're returning to the planet Earth immediately thereafter. What progress has been made? We contacted government officials. They refuse our existence. What plan will you follow now? Plan 9. It's been absolutely impossible to work through these Earth creatures. Their soul is too controlled. Plan 9. Ah, yes. Plan 9 deals with the resurrection of the dead. Long-distance electrode shot into the pineal pituitary glands of recent dead. Have you attempted any of this plan as yet? Yes, Excellency. How successful has it been? We have risen too so far. We shall be just as successful on more. It's too bad it must be handled this way. But it must. Those who we take from the grave will lead the way for our other operations. Yes, Excellency. Continue on. Report to me in two Earth days.
right. Don't worry about him. I can handle them. Probably be a lot more of them as soon as they find out about us. The truck is out of gas. This pump out here is locked. Is there a key? We can try to get out here if we can get some gas. Is there a key? Try this. Do you live here? We have to get to where there's some other people. Maybe, maybe we better take some food. I'll see if I can find some food. Two of them out there. Have you seen any more around here? I can I take care of those know. two. I but don't I know, know you're afraid, but we have I to... don't know! I don't know! What's happening? Oh. Don't look at it.
house. Find some wood, some boards, something about a fireplace, something we can nail this place up. Look, guys, duck. Look, I know you're afraid. I'm afraid too. But we have to try to board the house up together. Now, I'm going to board up the windows and the doors. Do you understand? We'll be all right here. We'll be all right here until someone comes to rescue us. But we'll have to work together. You'll have to help me. Now, I want you to go in and get some wood so I can board the place up. Do you understand? Okay? Okay? Pick out the biggest ones you can find. There, yeah, this room looks pretty secure. If we have to, we can run in here and board up the doors. Won't be long for those things be back pounding their way in here. They're afraid now. They're afraid of fire. I found that out. Beatman's Diner. Anyhow, that's where I found that truck I have out there. There's a radio in the truck. I had jumped in to listen to it. But a big gasoline truck came screaming right across the road. But there must have been 10, 15 of those things chasing after it grabbing and holding on. Now, I didn't see them at first. I could just see that the truck was moving in a funny way. And those things were catching up to it. The truck went right across. 
across the road. Slammed on my brakes to keep from hitting it myself. It went right through the guardrail. I guess, I guess the driver must have cut off the road into that gas station by Beekman's Diner. It went right through the billboard, ripped over a gas pump, and never stopped moving. By now, it's like a moving bonfire. Didn't know if the truck was going to explode or what. Still hear the man screaming. thing is just backing away from it. I looked back at the diner to see if, if there was anyone there who could help me. It was when I noticed that the entire place had been encircled. There wasn't a sign of life left except. By now there were no more screams. I realized that I was alone with 50 or 60 of those things, just standing there, staring at me. I, I started to drive. I just plowed right through them. They didn't move. They didn't run or just stood there, staring at me. I just wanted to crush them. They scattered through the air like bugs. Scattered through the air like bugs. We were riding in the cemetery. Johnny and me. Johnny. We came to put a wreath on my father's grave. Johnny and, and he said, can I have some candy, Barbara? Um, we didn't have any. And, oh, it's hot in here. And, and he said, oh, it's late. Why did we start so late? And I said, Johnny, if you'd gotten up earlier, we wouldn't be late. Johnny asked me if I were afraid. And I said, I'm not afraid, Johnny. And then this man started walking up the road. He came slowly, and Johnny kept teasing me and saying, he's coming to get you, Barbara. And I laughed at him and said, Johnny, stop it. And then Johnny ran away. And I, I went up to this man, and I was going to apologize. Why don't you just keep calm? And I looked up at and I said, could he? And he grabbed me. He grabbed me. And he ripped at me. He held me and he ripped at my clothes. I think you should just calm down. Oh, oh I screamed, Johnny! Johnny, help me! Oh, help me! And he wouldn't let me go. He ripped. <laughs> and then Johnny came and he ran and
Because of the obvious threat to untold numbers of citizens, and because of the crisis which is even now developing, this radio station will remain on the air, day and night. This station and hundreds of other radio and TV stations throughout this part of the country are pooling their resources through an emergency network hookup to keep you informed of all developments. At this hour, we repeat, these are the facts as we know them. There is an epidemic of mass murder being committed by a virtual army of unidentified assassins. The murders are taking place in villages, cities, rural homes, and suburbs with no apparent pattern or reason for the slayings. It seems to be a sudden, general explosion of mass homicide. We have some descriptions of the assassins. Eyewitnesses say they are ordinary-looking people. Some say they appear to be in a kind of trance. Others describe them as being... services in Washington, D.C., now tells us that the emergency presidential conference, which we've just mentioned, will include high-ranking scientists from the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. That's the extent of this latest meeting. at all costs. 
Late reports reaching this newsroom tell of frightened people seeking refuge in churches, schools, and government buildings, demanding shelter and protection from the wholesale murder, which apparently is engulfing much of the nation. Law enforcement officials are at a loss to explain or even a desire even to theorize about the reasons for this wave of murder. So far, the only are able to give the public is some of the Chief T.K. Dunmore of Camden, North Carolina, was quoted as saying, quote, tell the people for God's sake to get off the street. Tell them to go home and lock their doors and windows up tight. We don't know what kind of murder-happy characters we have here. And quote, is Chief Dunmore of Camden, North Carolina. So far, the only descriptions, the only clues anyone has of the killers come from frightened witnesses of some of the slaves. These eyewitness accounts very often describe the murderers as ordinary-looking people, misshapen monsters, people who look like they're in a trance, and things that look like people but act. some bullets out there. It was only late yesterday oh, when these. it became clear we were facing some kind of national emergency. When first reports began filtering in, newsmen and law enforcement agencies were of the opinion... This place is boarded up pretty solid now. In nature. However, as these we had to be all right here for a while. Dramatically, it was soon apparent that we had a gun and more than bullets, the of lawlessness. food and the radio. Began to suspect an obscure kind of conspiracy. Sooner or later, someone bound to come and get us out. Upstairs now. If anything should try to break in here, I can hear it from up there. I'll be down to take care of it. Everything is all right for now. I'll be back to reinforce the windows and doors later. But you'll be all right for now, okay? Okay. Civil defense officials in Cumberland have told newsmen that murder victims show evidence of having been partially devoured by their murderers. from witnesses to the effect that people who acted as though they were in a kind of trance were killing and eating their victims prompted authorities to examine the bodies of some of the victims. Medical authorities in Cumberland have concluded that in all cases, the killers are eating the flesh of the people they murdered. Repeating this latest bulletin just received moments ago from Cumberland, Maryland, civil defense authorities have told newsmen that murder victims show evidence of having been partially devoured by their murderers. Medical examination of victims' bodies shows conclusively that the killers are eating the flesh of the people they kill. Imagine such a thing actually happening 
But these are the reports we have been receiving and passing on to you. Reports which have been verified as completely as is possible in this confused situation. It is happening, and it would appear that no one is safe. agencies and the military have been organized to search out and destroy the marauding ghouls. The Survival Command Center at the Pentagon has disclosed that a ghoul can be killed by a shot in the head or a heavy blow to the skull. Officials are quoted as explaining that since the brain of a ghoul has been activated by the radiation, the plan is kill the brain and you kill the ghoul. Anything from the supply wagon, Gus? Uh, no, we're all right. Hey, Gas, put that thing all the way in the fire. We don't want it getting up again. Chief, Chief McClellan, how's everything going? Oh, things aren't going too bad. Men are taking it pretty good. You want to get on the other side of the road over there? Chief, do you think we'll be able to defeat these things? Well, we killed 19 of them today right in this area. Those last three we caught trying to claw their way into an abandoned shed. They must have thought somebody was in there. There wasn't, though. We heard them making all kind of noise. We came over and beat them off, blasted them down. Chief, Can I see you here? Yeah, OK. Chief, uh, if I were surrounded by six or eight of these things, would I stand a chance with them? Well, there's no problem. If you had a gun, shoot them in the head. That's a sure way to kill them. If you don't, get yourself a club or a torch. Beat them or burn them. They go up pretty easy. Well, Chief McClellan, how long do you think it will take you until you get the situation under control? Well, that's pretty hard to say. We don't know how many of them there are. We know when we find them, we can kill them. Are they slow moving, Chief? Yeah, they're dead. They're all messed up. Well, uh, in time, would you say you ought to be able to wrap this up in 24 hours? Well, we don't really know. We know we'll be into it most of the night, probably into the early morning. We're working our way toward Willard, and we'll team up with the National Guard over there, and then we'll be able to give a more definite view. Thank you very much, Chief McClellan. This is Bill Cardill, WIC TV 11 News. Thank you, Bill, for that report. Flying saucers seen over Washington, D.C. The army convoy moved into the field.
rockets were quickly set up. Colonel Tom Edwards, in charge of saucer field activities, was to make the greatest decision of his career. He made that decision. Colonel Edwards gave the signal to fire. as they had come, they were gone, even to the piercing eye of radar and the speeding jet fighters. Somebody had a cook out here, Vince. Yeah, it sure looks like it, Tom. Dragging 
that out of here and throw it on the fire. Nothing down here? All right, go ahead down and give him a hand. Let's go check out the house. There's something there. I heard a noise. All right, Vince, hit him in the head, right between the eyes. Good shot. <laughs> Torches over here. Back. Where's the back?